Hey guys, this is Bill. In the previous video, I talked about the distribution of the maximum and the minimum order statistics with a uniform distribution. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys about the distribution of the x m minus 1 order statistics with a uniform distribution and how we can compute the expectation of these order statistics. Remember that x m minus 1 is also the second largest observation from the n samples that we have. All right, so let's state the problem very clearly first. We have a variable that follow a uniform distribution with zero being the minimum and theta being the maximum. So if you are interested in standard uniform, then your theta would just be one, all right? We take n draws from this uniform distribution. So we will have n observations, and we order them with the smallest being x bracket 1, the second smallest being x bracket 2, and I'm going to refer to them as x1 and x2 respectively later on. And the second largest observation will be xm minus 1, and the largest observation will be xm, all right? So now we are interested in the expectation value of xn minus 1. So the first thing to do is to compute the CDF of xm minus 1. All right. So the CDF of xm minus 1 is actually slightly trickier than the maximum and minimum cases. That is because there are two separate scenarios that we need to consider. The first case is that your xm minus 1 is smaller or equal to y, which is then smaller or equals to xn, which is the largest observation. The second scenario is second largest observation is smaller or equal to xn, which is the largest observation, which is then smaller or equals to y. If you sum up probabilities of case 1 and case 2, then you will get the CDF. So let's compute their probabilities respectively. So for the first case, you need to first pick m minus 1 numbers who are smaller than y, correct? And each of them has a probability of p, x, smaller or equal to y, correct? Then since there are n of them, you take, the, you take a power of m minus 1. Then you multiply this expression with 1 minus p, x, smaller or equals to y. And this expression is the same as the probability of x bigger than y, correct? As for the second case, since all the observations are smaller or equals to y, it takes the probability of p x smaller or equals to y to the power of n. And what is the probability of x smaller or equals to y? Well, since we assume that x follow a uniform distribution of 0 to theta, we know that this probability of x smaller or equals to y is basically y over theta, correct? So if you sub this equality into the whole expression, you should be able to get the analytical form of the CDF. So I'm going to write it down in blue. You don't have to worry about the computation. It's rather tedious, but it's easy to do. So this is your CDF. And from CDF, we are interested in looking for the PDF. And then with PDF, we will be able to compute the expectation value, right? So the PDF of xm minus 1 at the value of y is basically the first derivative with respect to y of the CDF, correct? And later on, you will realize we actually don't have to do this differentiation because when you do the integration, you need to do it with a technique called integration by parts. So let's do it. The expectation of xm minus 1 would be just the integral from 0 to theta y multiplied to the density function of xm minus 1 at the value y, correct? And then with integration by part, you realize that you basically just need to compute y 
multiply the CDF at value y then you sub in the value of theta and 0 minus the integral of the CDF itself. So I'm not going to bore you with the computation details, but rather I need to mention a few points about the technique that you need to use for this integration. If you sub in the value here, this should be quite easy to compute. It will be theta. And now we are interested in computing this integral, correct? So the integral is basically equivalent to this. And what I did is basically to sub in the value of the CDF, which we have computed in blue here, all right? So you sub in this expression into the integral, and then you get this, all right? So for this integral, you can basically do them part by part. So for this part, you can integrate by itself then you can integrate the second part by itself as well. So for the second part, it's pretty easy, and let's do it. Theta over m plus 1. All right, so let's minimize this part. And now we proceed with the integral of the first part. All right, so for the first part, you need to do a integration by parts. Keep this part, then integrate this part. Sub in the value of theta and zero. Then minus the integral of, you differentiate this part, so you get minus one, then multiply the integral of this part. And then you do the integral from zero to theta. All right, so if you do everything carefully, your answer would be theta over m plus one. All right, so now that we have computed the two parts of the integral separately, each of them taking a value of theta over m plus one. So we know that for the whole integral, it takes a value of theta over m plus one plus theta over m plus one. So it takes a value of 2 theta over m plus 1. And if we sub back the integral value here, which is 2 theta over m plus 1, you realize that the expectation of x m minus 1 would be theta minus 2 theta over m plus 1. So it takes a value of m minus 1 over m plus 1 multiply theta.